Seriously, again? Is this thing ever clean? This is a 1960s Voigtlander Vito CL. And I think it is one of the most gorgeous cameras of the era. Look at all that shiny chrome. It's a fantastic, small, relatively light camera of the era. Now, I have to admit, if I was a dad in the 1960s with one of these, I would feel like the coolest guy ever on the beach with one of these. Until someone rocked up with something like a Konica 3 or a Minolta 5 series, or even worse, one of those fancy SLRs like an Exactor. That's okay, because it still looks great. And it actually performs pretty well too. It has a reasonable f2.8 lens, which does a pretty good job. It goes between 1 15th of a second all the way up to 1 500th. Well, there were plenty of other cameras that were more capable at the time. This thing wasn't terribly expensive, and coming from Voigtlander, it gave pretty good results. I don't think anyone would have been too disappointed if they showed up with one of these as a gift. Voigtlander wisely decided at this time it probably wouldn't compete with the high end, so it started making some really nice, small, easy to use cameras. I think they did a pretty good job. It features a selenium light meter, which works. Brighter, dimmer, brighter, dimmer, brighter, dimmer. We take light meters for granted now, but Back in the 60s, this selenium cell baby, ooh, not everyone had one of those. Most people were still doing Sunny 16, or if they were really fancy, they'll buy their own dedicated, separated selenium light meter. Mmm. Big problem with selenium light meters, as we all know today, they will die. Every single one of them will die. So while the light meter on here works perfectly fine for now, it is slowly going to drive me insane, and the reason for that is because as these die, they become less and less sensitive over time until one day they just stop. If you're really lucky, you miss all that, and one day you go to use it, and it's just dead. That's the best case scenario, because otherwise you start taking photos and you go, huh, why are all of my photos like getting way overexposed? And you keep on going around and around the camera until one day you finally go, hmm, you know what? That light meter is dead, and I should have gave up on it a long time ago. The fact that this one is still working is just incredible. So, if I love this camera so much, and if it brings me so much joy with all of its charm, why am I getting rid of it? Well, there's a few reasons. This used to be my everyday carry camera. It would go with me in my work bag, I would take it with me on weekends, and most of the time, it was absolutely perfect. Not terribly big, not terribly heavy. Well, okay, a bit heavy, but not, not the worst. But because they're smaller cameras, like the Olympus XA series, you kind of go, hmm, maybe I, maybe I should get something a bit smaller, something a little bit better. It doesn't have a filter thread. You can't put filters on this. If you do a lot of black and white photography, you can't either have a circular polarizer filter, a red filter, a neutral gradient filter, anything like that. You can try to put like the big like square filters on the front of here, but good luck holding onto those. That, that's going to be a nightmare. But the real reason I'm getting rid of this thing is because it has these arcane 1960s units of measurement for distance. And I am terrible at judging distance at the best of times. I need like one of those little like laser range finders or a fancy LiDAR system with autofocus for this thing. Because you tell me that I need to focus on someone who's 20 feet away? I don't know. And that's most of the problem with this thing. I've got so many missed shots because I've got no idea how far I should be setting this to. I know what everyone will say, oh, you just need to increase the aperture so that you have a good approximation and it's got this weird thing with a circle and a tri... No, none of it works. I've had too many missed shots with this, and as much as I want to live out my fantasy of being a dad on a beach in the 1960s, I keep on missing shots, 
and it's awful, and it makes me feel bad. But before we, we get rid of it, before I, I throw this thing out the window, let me just tell you of some of the wonderful things about it. It has an f2.8 lens. Now, this camera did come with the option of an Ultron f2 lens, and that was absolutely cool. They're not that common. Certainly not in this one. That was like the, the big expensive model up that you had to option for. Super secret bonus fact for you. You can use the top of some film canisters as a lens cap. Even though this camera doesn't have the fancy lens and it doesn't have the most sophisticated shutter, it still takes some pretty darn good photos. Now, as much as I was just ranting about how terrible it was trying to find focus, when you do get it or when you can't mess it up, the lens actually looks pretty good. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's not designed for any specific photo taking. It's certainly not built for macro. It's just general everyday photos. And that's fine. And that's why this was my everyday carry for so long. It's pretty small. I mean, let me just grab here a very early digital camera. Oh, look at that. Bam. Pow. Look at the difference. This thing is colossal. This thing, not so much. Huge. Cumbersome. Beautiful, elegant, makes you look like a dad on beach. So as much as I love it, and as much as it brings me joy, and as much as it sounds amazing, they're not terribly expensive, they're not worth a huge amount, they're not some magical collector's item. But if you can guess distance using the RK 1960s measurement system, I would say this is a pretty good camera for everyday use. And will bring you lots of joy. Just don't be surprised if the light meter doesn't work.